Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus 5G. By the way, I'll also be making a dedicated video showing all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video as well. Link will be in the description. Now with that said, first I'll start off with the full screen gestures. Now you can enable the full screen gestures from these settings and once you enable it, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for recent tabs. You can swipe from the left side or the right side to go back a step. For Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner. And just like on iOS, you can just swipe left or right on the bottom bar to quickly switch between applications. Next, we have a quick shortcut for the fingerprint scanner. Now, once you enable this toggle, you can just double tap on the fingerprint scanner to perform an action. You can choose from taking a screenshot, turning on the torch, you can also launch the camera application, open the control center, notification area, and do a lot more. And you can configure all that from here. With that said, here's a quick preview once again. Next, I'm going to show you how you can open applications in floating windows. For that, we need to go to the recent apps page. And from here, you can open any application in a floating window. Now, this all looks pretty fine, but there's a much simpler way to do it. And that's the new sidebar feature. Now, once you enable this feature, you can find a small indicator on the side whenever you're playing a game or watching videos, basically when you're using your phone in landscape mode. When you swipe on it, you can access the sidebar. Now you have all your applications and you can just touch on them to quickly open that application in a floating window. Now to use this sidebar everywhere, make sure to enable this particular toggle to keep it always on. Next, this one comes with a very cool feature called Sound Assistant. Well, it actually has two features. First, we get to adjust media sounds in multiple applications. So basically, we can set different volumes for different applications. Let's say you don't want to hear any sound from a particular game. Then you can set the volume for that particular game to be zero and the rest of the volume is at normal. So it's a pretty cool feature where you can adjust sound or volume to different applications. Next, we have multiple audio sources. Now, once you enable this feature, we can actually have different applications running music or running audio at the same time. Normally, when you try to play music or sound from two different applications, only one works. But once you enable this toggle, you can listen to music from both applications. For the next step, this one comes with Dolby Atmos, just in case you didn't know. You can access it from the settings and it's enabled by default. And from the settings, you can change the sound profile or even tweak the equalizer settings to tweak the audio quality as per your taste. This is something you should definitely check out. Next, I'm going to show you how to enable the app drawer. Now, by default, MIUI goes with the classic home screen where you don't have any app drawer. All the apps are thrown onto the home screen and that's it. So if you're like me who wants to keep your home screen cleaner and want an app drawer, you can enable it from here. Once you do that, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to access all your applications and keep your home screen much cleaner and basically the way you want it. By the way, we can also customize this app drawer you can change its background and its transparency as well. Next, we can also trigger Google Assistant by just using the power button. You just need to enable this toggle and then press and hold the power button to trigger Google Assistant. Next, I'm going to show you how to enable the dark mode on this phone. So from settings, you can enable the dark mode. And once you enable it, all the system UI elements change to the dark mode. Even stock apps like phone dialer, SMS application, even change to the dark mode. Even the Google applications will automatically change to the dark mode. Now this dark mode definitely helps you save some battery, looks much more cooler and also affects your eyes less at night. From these settings, you can also schedule to automatically turn on and turn off dark mode at a specific time. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the screen refresh rate of your phone. This phone actually comes with a 120Hz refresh rate display. It's actually a good thing but it also drains a battery a bit more. So for some reason, if you really don't care about the refresh rate of your display and want a little bit more better battery life, you can always switch back to the 60 Hertz. Personally, I would suggest you to put it at maximum for the best user experience. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the fingerprint recognition method. This phone actually comes with a side mounted fingerprint scanner and there are two ways to unlock the phone, touch option and press option. By default, it is set to touch. So whenever you just touch the fingerprint scanner, it instantly tries to unlock the phone. Well, it's a good feature, 
But firstly, I faced many accidental touch issues. So I would suggest you to go with the press option. So once you select the press option, you actually have to physically press the fingerprint scanner or the power button to unlock the phone. This is something I would definitely recommend you to do. Next, I'm going to show you how to take pictures using palm gesture. So this feature has been added recently on the Xiaomi phones. You just need to enable this option and just show the palm to the front facing camera and your phone will automatically take a picture. It's not a big feature, but something you might definitely want to try. Next, I'm going to show you how to remove the camera watermarks from your pictures. By default, whenever you take a picture on a brand new phone, you will always end up with watermarks. So if you don't like that, just disable the toggle for device watermarks. For some reason, if you want to add your own custom watermark, you can also do it from the same settings. By the way, if you don't like the camera shutter sound every time you take a picture, you can also disable it from the settings. Just disable the toggle for the camera sounds. Next, I'm going to show you how to take screenshots on this phone. By default, on any Android phone, if you want to take a screenshot, you can just press the volume down button and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. For some reason, if that's a bit difficult for you, on this phone, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. Once you enable it, you can just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. By the way, we also have a quick shortcut to take a screenshot even in the notification toggles. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a longer screenshot. So to take a longer screenshot, first we need to take a regular screenshot. You can either use the buttons or the gesture. Now, once you take a screenshot, you'll see a small pop-up preview. Just tap on scroll to start taking a long screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to use split screen mode on this phone or to say how to use two applications at the same time. For that, first go to the recent apps, then click and hold on the application that you want to use in the split screen mode, then select split screen. Now you can select the secondary app from the list below, or you can go to the home screen and select the secondary app from the home screen. Next, I'm going to show you how to enable split screen mode for all the applications. By default, all the applications do not support split screen mode. So to fix that, you need to go to the settings about page, click on the MIUI version seven times. Once you're done, developer options will be enabled. Now go back to settings, additional settings and find developer options. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable. Now once you're done and just restart your phone and then you will be able to use all the applications in the split screen mode. Next, if you want to change the display sleep time or the display screen on time, you can do that from these settings. Normally you can find it in the display options on other phones, but it's a bit tricky on this phone. Next, if you want to display the memory usage on the recent apps page, you need to enable this particular toggle. And once you do that, every time you go to the recent apps page, you can check out the memory status. Next, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, this is what you need to do. Go to these settings and you can choose between any of these options. I would select percentage outside the icon. Similarly, if you want to display the network usage of your phone on the status bar, just enable this toggle. Once you're done, your phone will display the real-time network usage information on the status bar. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the default applications for regular profiles like the default browser, SMS, and so on. For that, you need to go to the settings and come to this particular page. And from here, you can change your default browser, default SMS application, default email app, and so on. Going on next, if you're someone who's really concerned about privacy about your phone, and if you want to lock few applications on your phone, you can do that on this phone without installing any third-party applications. You can lock applications just like I've shown you in the preview. By the way, you can also have a different password for these locked applications from your phone's password, which is actually a pretty good thing. By the way, we can also use the fingerprint scanner and the face unlock features to unlock the locked applications. For that, we need to enable those options from settings. So guys, these are all the most important tips and tricks that you need to know about your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off. See you in my next video.